Hey everybody, welcome to Geology. Pardon me, I'm a little sick. If I sound a little off, that's the deal. And welcome to the last week of class where we're going to talk about structures. Geological structures, which like, like I've mentioned many times throughout the course of this term, these are all ways to unravel what's going on in the history of the planet, right? Whether we do that with fossils or rock types. Now it's like, okay, take all that. But how is it that certain sections of the earth look the way they do, right? So go to, I don't know, say Appalachians here, which you can see in satellite view here, no problem. See these ridges running through here? What is it about what happened in Earth's history in the past that made the, the Earth look the way it does here? How can we unwind that and figure it out? Or take like, I know we brought up the sentence before, uh, what, John McPhee, I think it is. How is it that the highest elevations on Earth are composed of rock that form below sea level? So what has gone on? And it, it uses a lot of what we learned this year. It may feel like a bit of a jump. This may feel like it should have been part of tectonics, but it's also like if you don't talk about rock types under the history of the planet and tectonics and all that first, it's it's a little tricky to talk about. Plus, it can be good review for wrapping up the class, right? Since that's what we're doing. So what I'd like to point out is if you go back to segment two here, um, this is what it should roughly look like. This is, this is the teacher view. It's a tiny bit different. Back when we did this, you had this note sheet right here for videos three through nine, which I suppose I could open. I took that and just took this section of it and recopied it into what I'm going to use for these notes right here. I'm not necessarily going to go through and fill out those columns because these first two are really what we focused on during the tectonics unit. And I said, hey, let's throw these in here during those videos, but I don't think I went too hard on it. Now that we get to structures, that'll be a little bit more prevalent. So expect these to be blank, but also... If you want to, you know, use your head and start to get ready for the final, I really recommend segment two was probably the most dense one we did. You're going to want to go back and check some of this stuff out anyway, right, to get prepped for the final. So good prep for this week's quiz and good prep for the final. And what we're going to use is a good way to wrap up this class. So what's the deal? So let's go through and remember a couple of our types of boundaries. Now I threw this Google Earth tour on there again. So again, if you have the downloaded Google Earth, or if you if you can really figure it out, it's possible to take the browser version. And this file right here, which is back in uh, segment two as well, tectonic plate boundaries, KMZ, those open up in Google Earth and show you exactly where the boundaries are. So starting in your notes, was, I believe, Divergent Continental, right? Sorry, I got a lot open here. All right. So Divergent Continental. Let's remember what those are, where they are found. Uh, the most famous example right now is the East Africa Rift Valley. That'd be that yellow line going right through there, where this section of Africa is splitting open relative to this section of Africa. So all well and good. Go back, review some tectonics on that. But now really what's going on, what do we want to say is happening? is what is the type of stress and that we're going to find extension which comes from tension all right now your book does a pretty good job which i opened here we go of showing these different kinds of stress i should have put this in this note sheet too but it's too late i didn't um tension there you go seeing it as a diagram right there, stretching or pulling apart. So when a continent begins to break apart, the rock that's within that is going to be pulled on, like, like a tug-of-war rope. That's what tension is, is that, that stress in that direction. All right, now the types of faults that that's going to make, um, that's where we're going to have to come down here. So a couple things we got to define first for this to make sense. Sorry, let me do another cough drop. So some terms we're going to need here. Uh, come from mining terms. So my my silly look, looking little diagram here would be if we're below ground, and I deliberately left some stuff out of here. If we're below ground and there's a mining shaft coming in and out of the page, well, they went down somewhere else and then they went across. They went right along that fault plane because that's where they're finding some goodies. So if we draw a miner in here, this is what miners look like. 
the terms we got to have are hanging wall and foot wall. So where his feet are would be considered the foot wall. That's this whole section over here, right? This is the foot wall. This section of rock over here, where maybe our miner hangs his lantern, this is what lanterns look like. Close enough. Is the hanging wall. Now this diagram is drawn generically enough where, and again, it's all this rock. So this whole section up here is the hanging wall. This whole section down here is the foot wall. So this diagram is drawn generically enough where you don't know which one has gone up and which one's gone down because these terms count for both <coughs> for, sorry guys, excuse me. All right, apologies again. Um, so I didn't put the arrows on there because these terms, both hanging wall and foot wall, apply whether it's this kind of fault or this kind of fault. And that is initially, while you're learning this, always been a challenge for students to learn, myself included, back in the day. Because what I think, I don't know, maybe I'm just myself, what I attached to was like looking at this going down relative to up, this going up relative to down, but it was hard to see the deal with what the hanging wall is and what the foot wall is. So when you've got a, a fault that's at an angle, whatever the one on top of that is, where a miner would hang his lantern, her lantern, their lantern, would be the hanging wall. And the one below the angle of that fault is the foot wall. So now, and again, I may have thrown this out there when we did tectonics, but we're getting a little bit more into it now, where we have extension or tension in the crust, which happens at these places, blah, blah, blah. Um, what you have here is that the hanging wall is dropping down relative to the foot wall. Quick fast forward preview, the opposite over here, when it's compression, is going to be that the hanging wall is rising up relative to the foot wall. Look at those diagrams back and forth like 10 times until you spot that difference. And I, there will be questions on both tests, which will be an example of one, and you got to tell me what it looks like. A black diagram like this or maybe a real life picture. Okay. So these are called normal faults. And all of this is, is important stuff and I don't necessarily want to write it in there. I want to talk as least as possible. Um, but this is all important stuff. What happens size wise? And in one of the future videos, we'll look at what this looks like with rocks when there's, uh, it's, it's been extended it now takes up more space. The width before to the width after is now bigger. And you'll want to note, like in words, that the hanging wall moves down relative to the foot wall. If you're a note taker, some people do these, some people don't. I'd, I'd consider writing that stuff right in there. Okay. Excellent. Let's go back to Google Earth. And, and really like, okay, so we got divergent on land here. And if these open up enough, uh, the sea will begin to invade. And that's how we get these narrow seas here. These always tend to happen in uh in threes where they're what 120 degrees apart and eventually as it gets bigger and bigger one of them fails that was the case here if we go jump back in time 200 million years ish there's one this way one this way and there would have been a failed arm that went right up through there there's signs of that in the crust in central africa okay so that is uh when there's tension in the crust what do you think Excellent. What about where there, where we're at convergent boundaries? So once again, reviewing the tectonics module from way back at the beginning of the year. Convergent boundaries can be this type, where one plate is sliding underneath another plate because this is oceanic, more dense and thinner. It's going to suck down underneath the, the less dense, thicker continental plate. So at that blue line right there, we would see if we could which we, uh, I guess we can't see, but we can see through studying how deep the earthquakes are, we can see that this is going down underneath. And the result of that is compression on this coast of, of, the, uh, of South America, which gives us the Andes along with the volcanoes that form due to the melting oceanic crust as it subducts down into the earth. 
where else do we see it? So I guess that same kind of thing is happening through here. It's a much smaller plate, so it's a much shorter trip, giving us the cascades through here. Um, then we've got oceanic oceanic. Here's an oceanic plate, and it's subducting underneath another oceanic plate, and pretty much doing the same thing as it was back there at that blue line, sucking down into the earth and giving us this volcanic island arc, which we call the Aleutian Islands off of Alaska. Or we looked at this section right over here through Tonga, um, where we get the Tonga Trench right here and an island arc forming right behind it. Still compression, right? Still plates moving together. And lastly, and probably the easiest to look at like structurally in terms of finding these kinds of faults, because it just because it's above the ocean, um, we'd have the Himalaya Mountains, where India has been in a car wreck with Asia for tens of millions of years, and all of this crust has gotten mashed up, uplifted up into the up into the air. Now that's an oversimplification of a whole lot of geology, right? But today's mission is really to say, like, okay, we did all that stuff, we did all that stuff. Now what are we getting for stress? This is where we're seeing compression. The resulting faults, although I already mentioned it, will be like this. This is called a reverse fault, where there's crustal shortening. The crust that was there before now takes up less space on the surface, less length, right? Less width. Um, and the hanging wall is moving up relative to the foot wall. So again... If you're a note taker, I would recommend noting all of that right in there. And finally, the shear. Now, here's where we're going to not really worry so much about hanging wall, foot wall kinds of things, because these tend to be uh, more uh, vertical in the crust, right? And again, since we're reviewing, we're going to go back to arguably the most famous of these transform blade boundaries, which runs right through the coast of California with all of its major cities right near it, many of its major cities right near it, the San Andreas, where we've got this chunk of California heading up that way relative to this chunk of California. And I don't know if I can draw on this necessarily, but so it's going that way. So if you were standing on this one and looking across, when you moved, in fact, let me find one of the rivers because that could come up. Let me, let me, uh, Pause for a moment and find one of the rivers where this is the case. All right, I wasn't having much luck on Google Earth, but here's exactly what I was looking for. That if you had a river that was flowing, you can find remnants of where that river is now. The old path is over here, indicating that the crust has gone that way, right? And then the current path is a new one right there. So if you were, if you were here when this was one intact river and you were standing on this side, where did that river go? It went off to your right. Now, if you can flip yourself over, flip your laptop over, if you're standing in this river, looking at that one, it also went to the right. And I know it's tempting to say, no, it's left, but it's not if you put yourself upside down and look at this. On this side, that went to the right. On this side, that went to the right, if you flip yourself over. Right? That's what a right lateral... or a dextral strike slip fault would be versus one that went left. So the whole San Andreas is, is indeed that, where this chunk is moving up that way. So be able to take like just a quick peek at that diagram and uh, see what we're looking at there. So again, where are we now? The transform, the type of stress that gets put on the, on the crust, it's not coming together, it's not going apart, it's sliding past each other which we're going to call uh, shearing uh, or a shear, shear stress, which gives us these strike slips. And again, it will be up to you to see the difference between the right lateral or left lateral. Just picture yourself standing there with the front standing on the other side, and either way you look, they will have gone to one person's left or one person's right. And dextral, I don't know if you know, like old school, like they used to think that people were right-handed, were skillful and dexterous, and left-handed people were sinister and evil. These are kind of like Latin root shout-outs to those misinformed thoughts. All right. 
And then the last thing, let's just pop back to the book and look at, if I didn't lose it, there we go. Look back at these just because I didn't come back to it after the tension one. So the spreading, the tension, the compression, squeezing together, and then the shear um, going that way. And again, this, this little section of the reading is great. Check it out in 13.1. Um, it's not that all the other forces are absent. I mean, there's still, this, this rock would still be being crushed underneath a whole bunch of other rock, right? But it's that the forces putting that tension on are greater than the forces that are mushing on it. And um, we'll do, I, I'm going to do probably two more videos, honestly. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll have a little bit more voice where we'll talk about uh, plastic ductile versus brittle, which, again, we did in, in, in uh, tectonics um, and some examples of that. So let's call that good for now. And I thank you very much. And I'll be back tomorrow with two more. And then we'll quiz uh, Thursday, Friday. Thanks, everybody.